I've managed to get my grubby little hands on the Samsung S95D OLED TV, which is brand new for 2024. And it has a new brighter screen with a matte finish and a new UI. So we'll see just how well it performs in this video, as well as how it compares to last year's S95C. Stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and lover of all things tech. And I was fortunate enough for Samsung to invite me to their facility where I could get some hands-on testing time on their S95D OLED TV as well as their flagship 8K QLED TV for 2024. Now they had the TV set up in a living room environment where I was free to perform all the tests I wanted and test them I did. So without further ado, let's get into it. Like last year, the S95D comes in three sizes, 55, 65, and a 77 inch screen size. It has four HDMI 2.1 ports, as well as their AI picture upscaling processor. It has their object tracking plus sound technology with actuators behind the screen to produce the sound and supports Dolby Atmos. So objects on screen travel with the sound. So the sound pans as an object pans across the screen, which is pretty cool. The screen supports up to 144 Hertz if you have a compatible device connected like a PC, for example, and has ALLM auto low latency mode for gaming. It supports FreeSync Premium Plus as well as the HDMI spec VRR for variable refresh rate gaming. It also, of course, supports HGIG as well as having their gaming hub for quick access to gaming settings. Now, the outside design hasn't changed much from last year. There's still the One Connect box and the TV itself is pretty much all screen and razor thin. It has the pedestal stand in the middle and that's pretty much all you'll see. Under the hood though is the new processor for 2024 as well as the new UI, which I think works a lot better than the 2023 implementation that I tested on the S95C. The biggest change for 2024 though is the brighter QD OLED panel as well as the new matte finish that's on the screen for their OLED glare-free technology as Samsung calls it. Wait, let me take this chance to tell you about M-Wave or the Midwest Audio Experience, which is an event put on by fellow home theater enthusiast where you can go and experience some of the best home theater components and home theaters in the real world so they'll have rooms where you can check out some of the best projectors or listen to some of the best speakers or other home theater experiences that you typically wouldn't get i've left a link in the description where you can find out more and purchase your tickets but definitely go support them because they're doing a great service to the home theater community truth be told i was skeptical about this matte finish on the screen because i've seen matte screens on devices before from other TVs to computer monitors or even matte screen protectors that you put on an iPad to protect it and they always have this grainy texture and just doesn't look as good as a screen with a glossy finish because that matte screen has the properties in there to scatter the light and not only does it tend to reduce the brightness output of the screen but it has that texture that you just can't escape and it affects the overall picture quality. So upon close inspection of the screen, I was happy to find out that it didn't have that texture, but it looked like just a regular screen, which was just not glossy. And that's, I think, is the best case scenario. But how does it actually perform? Well, I'm here to tell you that it performed really well. I had my portable light that I use in lieu of my studio light to test the reflection on the screen. And as you can see here, there is a significant reduction in the glare produced by the light, even when holding it so close to the screen. There was also no perceptible deviation in the colors. They appeared how you would expect them to when I used videos that I was very familiar with to test the TV. Colors were saturated and punchy and that OLED contrast was still very pronounced as one would hope to see. But I am curious how the TV actually measures. So when I can finally get one into my space so I can perform all the tests I want, whether that be gaming tests to the actual screen measurements to see the picture accuracy, I would love to see just how much of a deviation, especially compared to last year's QD OLED, which didn't measure all that great in the movie mode. 
But back to the screen performance, there actually wasn't a noticeable change in the brightness output when compared to last year's model. In this direct comparison, we can see that the differences are pretty indistinguishable. If you really pixel peep, you can see where there are certain areas of the screen that are brighter on both TVs at any given point. So I'd say they are pretty much even. This, of course, may be due to the implementation of the matte finish, the anti-glare technology, which then scatters the light coming to the screen and may scatter the light emanating from the screen as well. If that actually is the case and there is a little loss of light happening because of the matte screen, then the increased brightness from last year's model may just be there to maintain parity in screen performance between the two TVs. But given the choice, of last year's S95C and this year's S95D, strictly as far as the screen technology is concerned, I would actually choose the S95D because if you're in a bright room and there's a lot of ambient light coming in, then an OLED TV can be a bit of a challenge because of the glossy screen oftentimes. But if the portable light is anything to go by, then this will perform very well with sunlight coming in through your windows as well. We'll have to wait and see for when I get that TV in my space and I can do that test and open up all my windows. Oh, and the anti-glare technology on the QD OLED is different from the one that they implemented on their QLED, the mini LED TVs. When I compared how well their flagship 8K TV handled the portable light, it did noticeably worse than the QD OLED. So whatever magic or voodoo they're implementing on the QD OLED is much better than what they implement on their mini LED TVs. But granted, their mini LED TVs are brighter than the OLED, so they don't quite need it as much. Although, given how well it performs here, it could benefit from it. Using some test patterns to measure the TV's tone mapping performance, I saw that it performed pretty well where there was ample definitions in the sections from the brightest areas to the darkest areas. And in the tunnel test, that was more of the same, where the sections were amply defined. In the low stimulus test though, the TV didn't perform quite as well as I'd like to see where some of the lowest net items were crushed and were not properly displayed on the screen. This is a bit worse than I've seen on other OLED TVs though, and Sony still holds a crown for this area. The TV handled gradients from 10-bit sources pretty well where there was very little to no pasteurization on those 10-bit sources, but it didn't do quite so well on 8-bit sources, which is typically what we see with TVs, even with their fancy processing. Motion handling too was pretty good on the TV, but there was some artifacting when you cranked up the motion enhancement, as you would tend to see in the TV sports mode, where the motion enhancement is cranked up for fast moving sports. Let me know if you guys wanna see how this TV compares to other Samsung TVs, like their QLED mini LED TVs, whether the 4K or 8K versions, especially given the price. In game mode at 60 hertz, TV had a 9.3 millisecond response time, and at 120 hertz, it had a super fast 4.7 milliseconds response time, which is awesome. You can play some pretty competitive games and have a super responsive experience with a TV that quick. But this was just my initial test. I'll be getting the TV in to my space so I can do some more in-depth testing and comparison. So definitely stick around and come back for that. And make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you can know when that video drops. And definitely stick around for my other videos on the QLED TVs I tested at their facility. Let me know your thoughts about the S95D in the comments below as well as the other TVs you're looking forward to. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood villain man saying be safe and peace.